If you're a man, you already know that your testosterone levels are pretty important. So it might be a little scary to learn that testosterone levels are going down at a very fast pace for American men. According to the Massachusetts Male Aging Study, between the year 1987 and 2004, testosterone levels have dropped by about 17%, and they're dropping by about 1.2% per year. The observations in this study are also consistent with other long-term trends, including a decrease in overall sperm quality. Now, testosterone and estrogen are supposed to be maintained in a healthy, correct balance, but when estrogen levels rise, testosterone levels tend to drop, and the same thing happens vice versa. Having lower testosterone and higher estrogen can lead to a loss of muscle mass, increased body fat, especially around your belly and your chest, and it can also lead to hair loss, depression, and even sexual dysfunction. So since these are things that most men would want to avoid, I wanna go over the five really bad habits that cause estrogen levels to rise and testosterone levels to drop in men. If you wanna increase your testosterone levels naturally, you're definitely gonna to wanna to follow along because towards the end, I'll explain how eating what you might even think is a healthy diet can actually be lowering your testosterone levels even if your diet is high in healthy fats. The good news is that these five habits that I wanna go over today are all within your control, meaning you can change them starting today just by making the decision to do so. So I hope this video inspires you to take action because there are very effective ways to help balance out your hormones naturally. Let's start with the most obvious by identifying one of the worst habits that leads to higher estrogen levels in men, and that's inactivity. So many American men live sedentary lives in which they have jobs that don't require much physical labor, and then when they're done with work and they get home, their lack of activity continues. Some pretty large and conclusive studies show that people who exercise regularly have higher testosterone levels than people that don't. Not only does exercise itself help you maintain a better balance between estrogen and testosterone, but it also helps you stay leaner. This is important because fat tissue contains an enzyme known as aromatase, and it converts testosterone to estrogen. So having a lower body fat percentage helps prevent higher estrogen levels. This is one of the reasons why obese people tend to have higher estrogen levels, while people with more muscle mass and lower body fat percentages tend to have higher testosterone levels. Regular exercise is so important for maintaining your testosterone levels that it might even be more important than your diet. One study showed that a group of obese men that started exercising more experienced much greater increases in their testosterone levels than the group that didn't exercise as much but restricted more calories. And in this study, participants mostly stuck to aerobic exercise. Even though researchers concluded that the aerobic exercise had a big impact on testosterone levels, other forms of exercise are even more beneficial for your testosterone. Lifting weights is by far one of the best natural testosterone boosters that there is. While any form of resistance training in general can help provide short as well as long-term boost to testosterone levels, research has demonstrated that compound multi-joint movements using heavier weights for fewer reps boost testosterone much more than isolation movements and it boosts it more than using lighter weights with higher rep ranges. Also, higher intensity training will provide a bigger boost when compared to steady state cardio. The bottom line is that the first habit that you wanna change right away is inactivity. Any way you do that is great, but ideally you would wanna incorporate three to five days a week of weight training. The goal is to target and break down all the muscles in your body at least two to three times a week. You can accomplish that with less trips to the gym by doing full body workouts, but this can also be accomplished very effectively with split body routines as well. During these workouts, you should be aiming to push yourself outside of your comfort zone with a heavy weight that you can only lift for roughly five to eight reps. And you should focus on exercises like squats, deadlifts, bench presses, military presses, and other compound exercises that involve big muscles and multiple joints. The next really bad habit I wanna go over is not getting enough sleep. Now I know this isn't the first time that you've heard that getting enough quality sleep is important for your health, and I know that if it was up to you, you would never set an alarm clock again. But in regard to your estrogen and testosterone levels, sleep may be even more important than anything else. And it doesn't take long for a lack of sleep to cause a hormonal imbalance. Just one week of not getting enough sleep can significantly reduce testosterone levels. The National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute funded a study that took healthy men and restricted their sleep to only five hours per night. 
Within one week, their testosterone levels drop between 10 to 15%. While 10 to 15% isn't a huge reduction over the course of years, it's a big reduction only in one week of sleep deprivation, especially when you combine the other negative hormonal effects of not getting enough sleep. For example, a lack of sleep increases ghrelin levels and decreases leptin levels, which ultimately increases food cravings. In fact, according to studies, just one night of sleep deprivation can increase ghrelin, which by the way is your hunger hormone, it can increase it by an average of 22% and can go all the way up to 32%. An increase in appetite like this can easily lead to gaining more weight and body fat, which I've already mentioned is very bad news for your estrogen levels. Now, on top of the fact that you'll be eating more, your body will also be more likely to store the food that you ate as fat due to insulin resistance. A study from the University of Chicago showed that without enough sleep, your body increases fat storage because of a significant reduction in insulin sensitivity. So significant that the group that only got four and a half hours of sleep produced three times the amount of insulin as the group that got eight and a half hours of sleep. And keep in mind, these were results only after four days of sleep restriction. A lot of people go through week after week sleep deprived, a lot longer than four days, getting about four to five hours of sleep every single weekday, Monday through Friday. The solution here is to make it a priority to get seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Even though getting a few more hours of sleep may be challenging with your schedule, it'll have a very positive effect on your hormones. Next is a bad habit that most people don't want to hear about, and that's alcohol consumption. Now, I'm not saying that you can never drink again, just to keep your estrogen levels in check. An occasional drink or two won't really harm your hormones all that much, but heavy binge drinking or daily alcohol consumption can have some really negative effects. In one four week long study, normal healthy men were given the equivalent of about four to five shots of alcohol on a daily basis. After only five days, the group drinking the alcohol had a significant drop in their testosterone levels and their testosterone levels continued to drop throughout the entire four weeks. Drinking a lot of alcohol like this can also slow down your fat metabolism, leading to more fat storage. The liver isn't only responsible for processing alcohol and detoxing your body. It plays a large role in converting food into energy and nutrients for your cells. While you might have been burning a bunch of fat before drinking, after drinking, your body will be breaking down alcohol instead of fat. While your liver is busy breaking down the alcohol, it's also unable to effectively perform one of its other major functions, which is to help produce testosterone. Drinking also interferes with your liver's ability to get rid of excess estrogen, because once again, the liver has to focus on metabolizing the alcohol instead. On top of all that, you have to consider that most drinks have extra calories in them in the form of sugar. And to make matters even worse, after drinking a lot, your willpower and self-control goes right out the window. This often leads to binge eating a ton of junk food like pizza, burgers, and fries, and all that food is likely to be stored as fat, further raising estrogen and lowering testosterone. Speaking of food, let's talk about the bad diet habits that raise your estrogen levels. Most experts will promote high fat diets as a cure to low testosterone levels, and they do have a good point. Without including some healthy fats in your diet, your testosterone levels will plummet. There are numerous studies that support this. For example, one study had participants cut their daily fat intake in half, while still giving them roughly the same amount of calories per day. And after eating like this for six weeks, sure enough, their testosterone levels dropped. Information like this leads a lot of people to think that raising fat higher and higher will produce more and more testosterone, which isn't necessarily true. There's no denying that a very low fat diet will disrupt your hormonal balance, but once you're taking in enough monounsaturated fats, omega-3s, and some saturated fats, taking in extra dietary fat above that doesn't really boost testosterone all that much. For example, in a 10 week long study, researchers compared a group that got 41% of their daily calories from fat to another group that got 18% of their daily calories from fat. And the group getting more fat had 13% more testosterone production. But this doesn't mean that doubling fat intake from 40% to 80% would have the same effect, especially because having such a high fat diet would require you to reduce calories somewhere else to maintain your weight, usually from carbs. The problem here is that most people don't know that low carb diets can also have a negative impact on testosterone. In one study, men that took part in three intense training sessions per week had their daily carb intake cut in half, and they noticed a significant rise in cortisol and significant reductions in testosterone. 
There are other studies like this that show that carbs are also important for regulating hormones, especially for people that go through at least a couple intense training sessions per week. The point is you can definitely lose weight, burn fat, and increase insulin sensitivity with a very low carb diet like a keto diet. You can also lose weight and burn fat with a low fat, high carb diet. While both diet plans will work for different people that have different preferences, really low fat and really low carb diets aren't ideal for your hormones for really long lengths of time. So after using one of these methods to lose body fat, you should consider transitioning to a long-term diet plan in which you should try to incorporate all three macronutrients into the plan for optimal hormone levels or you can just burn fat and lose weight with a diet that starts with a balance of all three macronutrients and stick to that plan long term. Just keep in mind that any kind of caloric restriction can also decrease testosterone levels until you bring your calories back up to maintenance, which is why diet breaks and refeeds are so important and the goal of any diet plan should be to eventually return to maintenance. Regardless of what diet plan you go for initially to burn some fat, for long-term success, I recommend a minimum of 20% of your diet to come from fat. And if you're incorporating a lot of high-intensity exercise, like lifting heavy weights, you should try to take in at least a moderate amount of carbs to maintain a good testosterone to cortisol ratio. Since we're touching on the topic of cortisol, a really bad habit that you want to avoid is constantly stressing yourself out. Again, this is one of those things that's easier said than done, but it's so important for you to lower your stress levels. This is because when you're chronically stressed out, your body is releasing more cortisol, and studies show that cortisol and testosterone happen to have an inverse relationship, meaning when one goes up, the other goes down. Just like it might be difficult to reorganize your life to get enough exercise and enough sleep, it'll probably be difficult to reduce stress as well. But doing these things should be a priority in your life because even though it might seem like it's taking time away from you in the short term, it'll only add time on over the long term if you know what I mean. Just by eating healthy food, getting enough sleep, and exercising regularly, you'll already be reducing a whole lot of stress. But you can take steps to further reduce it with short 10 to 15 minute intervals of meditation, using saunas, attending yoga classes, and getting massages. That's it guys, I really hope this video has helped you out. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I release new tips and tricks just like this. Also, if you're looking to lose some body fat or gain muscle mass with a program that won't kill your libido, you should try my six week challenge. On average, my clients that are looking to lose weight are losing 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in only six weeks. And clients that are looking to gain muscle mass are gaining 5% lean body mass, again, in only six weeks. The best part is that I guarantee you, if you follow my plan from day one to day 42, you can have the whole program for free. And this is especially awesome when you consider the fact that the program comes with a 42 day workout plan, a full video exercise library, a customized diet plan, based on your preferences, as well as a 42 recipe cookbook and your own personal accountability coach to keep you moving along for all six weeks. To find out more, you can click the link below or you could visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com.